thank you um welcome once again to my session second session i was here earlier uh, so um briefly i'm henry abea i lead the it team at uh, malimu national circle which is the top and uh, the leading circle in kenya and uh, in africa in terms of uh, asset base so um i've been in the industry for over 16 years i, I think the moderator said six months and you're wondering six months what has someone uh, achieved over 16 years in the circle industry and today we uh, want to talk about um, innovation in the circles and uh, what needs to be done so that uh, we give value to our members so uh, my, my topic is uh, circles to innovate or perish um, and then why why do we need to innovate uh, but again uh, I want to see how and what innovation is uh, I've highlighted that uh, is, is the practical implementation of ideas ideas is involved and of course new is involved and then improvement so that um, innovation most times could be construed to be meaning IT but then again IT can innovate uh, business can innovate at the end of the day innovation is just about ideas new ideas and how to uh, continuously uh, improve on these ideas um, why then do we need uh, to innovate uh, we innovate because we want to meet the ever evolving member expectation and the needs um, we want to innovate because we are competing with other industry players out there we are competing with fintechs who are uh, doing much of uh, technology disruptions then again if we don't innovate uh, our members might end up uh, getting into uh, those uh, fintech spaces um, uh, to those tell uh, getting loans from those ends because we are not probably innovating we are not moving with the rapid changes in the in the ecosystem uh, we are innovating because uh, then again with innovation comes efficiency and uh, we're going to reduce the costs of even uh, uh, doing business uh, also we are uh, innovating because uh, we want to diversify services uh, one of the things that is happening uh, in the circle industry currently is uh, organizations trying to give uh, their members services through technology then that comes to mobile banking that is uh, internet banking uh, we want to di diversify services so that uh, we are able to uh, pull those members and even make them stay with us longer so that we are able to maintain even um, get more members uh, as we do business and you know we, uh, we there, there is much we can do with uh, with those numbers so basically we are innovating because of a few the of the reasons that i've given but of course there's more that we can do with uh, with innovation whether through technology or business so then uh, we go into how can circle tap into uh, uh, innovation uh, be it uh, through technology or even through uh, products and, and even services how do we foster that innova innovation culture in the organization with the innovation culture being integrated into the business and even um, our operations then we are able to tap into those uh, crazy and audacious ideas that come from the team members so that we are able to give uh, more value and probably uh, maintain and even attract more uh, business um, to maintain this uh, innovation culture or enforce uh, and even foster we encourage uh, cross-functional collaboration with cross-functional collaboration then we are able to get those ideas from business from marketing from finance uh, from IT at the end of the day when you congregate and look at those uh, ideas then you'll be able to pick at least one or two so collaboration is key and um, without that then you are, you might not be able to uh, have that holistic or even uh, um, that impact in the in the organization so the collaboration is one of the ways to foster that innovation culture uh, then create those innovation workshops and forums um, create those uh, uh, sessions with other uh, teams create those uh, workshops so that you can share those ideas uh, with those workshops and forums you have uh, uh, people from different backgrounds giving you uh, uh, new ideas uh, how to challenge each other to do more so that you're able to uh, bring uh, value to uh, the organization and even to you members uh, you, uh, third you need to implement a system to recognize and reward uh, I've seen organizations reward uh, those uh, key ideas or key innovation ideas that uh, give uh, good good uh, in incentives to, to the organization how do you do this then um, it is integrated also into the appraisal system so that uh, 
uh, if someone comes with a, a, a very innovative idea that will um, bring more business, for example, or will help you uh, uh, get more members out of a certain sector, uh, we need to uh, reward uh, that, that idea. So if you do this, then you are able to get more ideas even from your teams, um, whether it's an, an IT team, whether it's a finance team, a, a marketing team, uh, a procurement team, uh, that idea needs, needs to be uh, rewarded. You will be able to get more, more of those uh, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your teams. I invest in training programs uh, that will en enhance the skills of your, your, your team members, your, uh, the employees in your organization. Uh, with training, you keep learning every other day. You'll never stop learning. Uh, develop a structured process for evaluating. I said you can also integrate this to your to your appraisal system, to your performance systems. Um, you evaluate uh, how did we get uh, to this point, who gave this idea, how did we uh, incorporate it to our business, and what value did it bring, uh, what numbers did we get out of out of that idea. Then if you're able to uh, evaluate, prioritize, and even implement those I ideas and even track it, the, the the value that they drive, then you'll be able to foster that in innovation culture. At last, you can um, uh, actively uh, f solicit uh, feedback from your members, solicit feedback from your, uh, your team members, from your customers. This way, you'll be able to um, get even ideas. That is why even in uh, the basic trainings, at the end of the day, you are asked for feedback. Feedback is to help even the trainer or even the organization uh, get uh, how to improve uh, the next, uh, the next uh, session. So feedback is, uh, is key. Um, we also realize that now with data, you're able to innovate even more. Uh, how you analyze, how you collect your data helps you to get uh, insights of what you are holding. You're able to come up with new products. For example, if you are analyzing your, uh, the behavior of your members, uh, it will show you what products they would prefer or what products go more, uh, more in January, for example, which products or services do members prefer in December. That way, with that data, you're able to uh, get uh, what you need to put out uh, in the market so that you also don't give out products or services that do not bring value to your members. Uh, you are spending time, you are spending money, you are spending, uh, you giving uh, your resources time to implement those products. But then again, uh, you've not analyzed, you don't know who needs this product. Uh, when you put it out there, then you have no value out of it. But then you've spent money, you've spent time, you have had your teams work over time. Um, but then what value did you uh, bring? So uh, circles have very multiple sources of, of, of data. You have members uh, spread across the, the economy. Uh, members spread uh, from um, various sectors of the economy, be it service industry. Uh, so how are you going to use this data? How are you going to use these demographics and even attract uh, various generations of, uh, of members? Uh, then we need to implement uh, robust data analytics. We've seen organization uh, adopt business intelligence uh, uh, tools, uh, data analyti analytics uh, in, their, in their operations. We've seen organizations uh, employ uh, data analysts so that they want to evaluate that data. The data that we have, how useful is it? So that we also don't collect inf uh, data from our members, their age, their, 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 their regions or where they work and then not use it in any way. So with this data, you analyze, you're able to get more insights into that data. And of course, with the data being analyzed properly, you're able to make decisions out of it. You're able to shorten even the decision-making process. Um, how fast do you decide when you have data? And how fast can you decide when you don't have data? So if you look at the two aspects, then it means whoever has data and has done a good analysis out of it will decide faster than the, uh, the person who does not have the capability or even the tool to analyze um, uh, the data. Um, so uh, just an example of um, data-driven driven, uh, innovations in the financial industry. We have credit uh, scoring uh, algorithms, and we've seen now uh, circles uh, adopting uh, credit uh, scoring engines or even solutions so that um, how do you lend uh, to a certain, a certain cadre of, uh, of members, or how do you lend to uh, Henry, for example? What are you looking at so that uh, the, the the loan that you you are you are you are, you are giving out, you are sure that is going to be repaid? Because you see that PR is also uh, growing, uh, the portfolio are, are at risk. So uh, with um, credit scoring uh, solutions that you can employ in your organization, then you are able to give uh, risk-free uh, products. So because then uh, without those loans being repaid, you will not be able to get uh, that money again to lend to, 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 the, other, to the other members.
because in a circle you will collect money from everyone and lend to each other. So if we lend out and it's not uh, repaid, because we've not looked at how what criteria we are using to lend with credit scoring, uh, scoring algorithms, then you will be able to uh, be sure that what you, you, you are lending, at least the risk is uh, reduced. We've, uh, we have personalized financial uh, recommendation, fraud detection systems, uh, predictive uh, analytics, uh, uh, even for, for, for risk management. So that uh, we're trying to look at product A, uh, how has it performed over two, three years ago, and um, what do we need to make, uh, or what change do we need to make to this product, so that uh, if uh, we need to give more uh, of those loans or products or services, then we need to look at what data, the, anal uh, the analysis of the last three years, can we then predict that in the next two years, this product is going to hit the roof, or this product is going to be removed from the market because it's not giving value. So such are the solutions that organizations can uh, employ so that you're able to get uh, into the market and get uh, business and even uh, create more income from, uh, from those aspects. Uh, then again, what are the benefits that you can derive from those data-driven decisions? So with data then, you get uh, a member-centric uh, insights. With uh, ana analyzing that data, you get to know who needs what product at what time. Uh, we have um, organizations over the experience, uh, the years I've been in the industry, we have organizations that have products for specific uh, uh, seasons. For example, a product for uh, Christmas, a product for Easter, a product for a certain holiday, a certain month of the year. So that uh, this is usually done because of we've been able to uh, analyze data and see what has been happening uh, through the period of that product. And then, of course, with data-driven uh, decisions, uh, you're able to uh, mitigate risk. Uh, you're able, you're able to um, get more, become more efficient operationally, and uh, of course, you get that advantage, uh, competitive advantage, when you have data and you've been able to analyze, and it's helping you in making uh, uh, decisions. Um, Again, uh, for you to move even more in the industry, you need to collaborate. Uh, collaboration with partners, those would be uh, vendors. Collaboration is very powerful, both internally and even uh, externally. So uh, when you collaborate with uh, other people in the industry, you get access to expertise. There is expertise that you cannot get in your organization. So with collaboration with uh, third parties, you're able to get that expertise that you need to drive uh, business. Um, you are able to uh, optimize uh, even resources. Uh, you are able to speed, uh, get that speed to the market. So with collaboration, if I'm collaborating with a third party, for example, on mobile banking, then how fast can I get that product into, into the market? You're able to diversify, um, even uh, get uh, newer uh, perspectives. Um, then how can circles make strategic uh, partnership for, in for, for, for innovation? Then collaborate with FinTech, as I said, we are collaborating with a number of fintechs just to give that service to, to the member who is probably out or in, uh, inside uh, the country. So with that collaboration, then you are able to give that uh, service out there. Uh, we doing, uh, we've seen much of integrations to banks, uh, members uh, through ATMs, uh, then uh, because circles, we do not have that capacity to have uh, our, our own uh, uh, channels, then we are collaborating with banks to give ATM services, uh, to collaborating with IPSL now for uh, PESA link. So those are partnerships that will uh, help you scale uh, your, in, uh, your, your innovation. So um, how do you then identify the potential partners? Of course, the partners are so many. Well, how do you uh, identify them? You need to define your objectives. You need to research and get due diligence so that you also don't fall into uh, the wrong hands in terms of uh, who ven which vendor you're working with. Uh, have that open communication, uh, check out on the legal and even regulatory compliance of those partners before you even uh, um, rob your business in. Flexibility and adapt adaptability, uh, what is the long-term uh, perspective that you have. Uh, basically, we would also want to see the KPIs for tracking innovation, uh, how are your members adapting to those products and services. Those ad the adoption rate will give you that indicator. Uh, the satisfac satisfaction scores, if you are uh, doing some surveys out, out of the services and products you're giving, uh, return on investment, what returns are you getting from the investment you've had, 
um, how long does it take uh, you to the market? Uh, do, can you be able to evaluate how fast the product has been adopted? And of course, risk uh, uh, mitigation. Uh, we need to continuously, of course, measure and scale and to go uh, innovation in, in, in our circles, what we can use to gauge uh, that uh, speed or, or even the innovation we've given out is member feedback, collect that information, get that feedback, be able to relate the feedback to what you've been offering, um, get some financial metrics to use to scale and even to measure. Uh, operational efficiency, how efficient have you been after the innovation that ha has come in? Um, market impact we have are you able to get that impact in the market analyze analyze the market share that you have for example if you are competing with a certain organization for a certain uh, kind of members what is your impact or what is your penetration in that aspect then that will be a uh, key for you to be able to uh, get the value challenges and risk of course of not uh, innovating as a circle you will be reducing your members uh, reduction of uh, members uh, you will be uh, stagnating uh, you will lose uh, your competitiveness and of course members will keep moving from one organization to the other because of what uh, value they are getting from uh, organization A and B. Uh, operational inefficiencies and of course the costs uh, for your operation uh, will be very high. Um, I have a, a proverb there, when the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. So where is your organization? What are you building? Are you building a wall? because there's wind blowing or are you building uh, windmills? So then I, 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 I want to challenge you that you build uh, a windmill out of it and not build a wall. Um, I think that will be it because of time. And as I said, uh, my name is Henry uh, from Malimu National Circle. Those are my contact details. Um, well, I, I, I do more, more in terms of uh, consultancy advisory, ICT projects, and uh, it's a pleasure to have had this session with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.